Hello there, and welcome to the Egg and Gear Show. This has been getting a lot of attention on the old interweb in the past few weeks. It's a PARD DS3570RF. It's a day and night vision scope, made to look like a standard rifle scope. It seems PARD are following the trend of doing this sort of style. My question is, is it any good? Shall we find out? Now, these, as I've said before, have been waved around for a few weeks. However, some of the early versions being waved around before the release from the official UK distributor are not passed by the safety board. So be careful what you buy. This is an official UK distribution PARD unit from an official retailer outlet, Airgun 101 Shop. It's mine, so that's my first bit of advice from me to you. Buy tested and legal from an official outlet. And as I said at the start, this is the DS35, and it's the LRF version, not the non-LRF version. So in the box, you get the scope, a set of Picatinny mounts and a neoprene cover, some instructions and a USB-C cable. And the 18650 battery is in the scope. You just need to remove the tape off the top of the battery to activate it. And charging, well, I would never charge the battery in the unit. I know that's not what everyone does. But for me, the external charge away means that if that powerful 18650 battery goes wrong while charging, it does not take out the entire scope. The scope itself is 35 centimeters long. With the eyepiece extended, this bit here, it goes out to 39 centimeters. And yes, you do need to extend it, that bit there. Mine is dialed out an extra 3.8 centimeters to get the clearest image of the reticule. The 18650 battery fits horizontally across the scope in there. So the left turret does nothing. The top turret is the zoom function and the menu access system. The scope itself has two digital image settings, one at 5.6 magnification, or if you turn that, 11.2 mag. And on the top is these bug eye attachments. The left has the IR light and the right has the LRF or laser rangefinder. If you're purchasing the non-LRF version, you only have the light on the top. And I'm not aware you can add or remove any of these items. So no, I don't think you can buy the non-LRF version and add the LRF at a later date. Even though I can see screws, I wouldn't go removing them. The tube itself is a 30 millimeter one and that makes it easier to mount. And included is a set of Picatinny rings. However, I have decided not to use those rings and I've used no limit mounts instead at my own cost, as I want a little bit more range at distance. It also helps to save on that electronic zero system. You also get a rubber eyepiece like that if you want to use it. And I haven't yet. The front has a chunky focus ring for image, kind of like a parallax, but not. It brings everything into focus and I've gone from five yards out to 170 yards testing mine. It's a very, very fine adjustment, but it works very well. The reticle image is round and fills the entire eyepiece up. Until now, we've been used to a rectangular screen, but this is fully round like a normal scope and it's an 800 by 800 LTPS for those geeks out there. And the sensor resolution is 256 by 1440. On the rear is a button panel, which has buttons to power the unit on and off and to take a photo or start recording, to activate the Wi-Fi or the rangefinder and to change from day to night. And you can also adjust your IR illumination levels from there as well. The side panel has a slot for a mini SD card, a USB-C port, and a micro HDMI port. The front cover has a small hole, 
and this can be open and closed here as well. This can be used during daylight as the 0.001 low look sensor can be overwhelmed with bright light. Open the cover as it gets darker or in full darkness to increase light going into that sensor. But that's quite nice that that's actually on board there. That's a very quick walk around of the scope. It's very simple. But remember, if you have a dovetail rifle on your gun, you need extra dovetail mounts, 30 mil ones, and they are not included in the package. Okay, let's get to it. With the scope on the gun, I have tried multiple ways to film the internal menu system. As when you record using the internal system within the pod, it only records the crosshairs and ballistic marks, not the menu and all the setup. I've tried filming through a screen and using all sorts of attachments and finally settled on this. Now, to be clear, the image may flicker a little, what you see in a minute, that's my camera trying to capture that image from the pod, not the pod itself. It's my camera. In the top left, um, it's going to be that way, I think. I will put a note of whether you're looking at a camera attachment image or an image captured by the pod unit itself, just to be clear. Using the top button, I can do a quick press, which kind of brings me up a minimized version of the menu or I can come back out and I can do a long press which takes us into the extended menu like that straight away we've got ballistic calculator we'll come back to that in a minute you can go range selection and you just push down and you can choose between meter and yards and push down to select then we go to picture in picture which you can select and you can turn that on and that gives you a magnified version of your target up close. And you can see that in action there with the crosshairs. Go back into the menu again. And we're going to turn that off. Then we're going to go down to reticle adjustment, which we'll come to in a moment. Gyroscope, which is all your displays on the side and you can turn that on or off and you can calibrate it. Default magnification, so when you turn the scope on, which power is it going to run at? We're going to have it on 5.6. Default colour, you can have it on colour, black and white, yellow or green. Black and white. Yellow. These colours, the, the yellow and the green, are really usable during the night time and green. Leave it on colour. Brightness, you can select your brightness of IR or you can do that through the buttons on the top. Display brightness, I've got it on three at the moment. Auto power off, I've got mine set on 10 minutes. Auto recording, I've got mine off at the moment but it's there loop recording so how often it recreates a new file i've got mine set at 10 minutes self-activated recording you can have it on or off and you can select your sensitivity there if you want but i've got mine off date and stamp which is fairly obvious i've got mine off record audio i've got it on at the moment but it's not a high quality speaker it will just capture bass noise beep sound I don't want that on at all you can have your Wi-Fi on or off and again we'll come back to that in a moment exposure well I've got mine set there but you've got all sorts of different settings you can try if you're into fine-tuning your imagery language fairly self-explanatory date and time I haven't set mine, but there we go. Let me just back out of that. You can format your card if you have a card in there. You can reset the entire scope to default settings if you want. And the eye tells you what firmware version you're using. 
The first thing you're going to want to do is zero the scope to the gun. So let's just go ahead and do that. Please bear in mind I'm working using this tiny little screen. So we're going to get there as much as we can. Fire a shot. There we go. And I can see that I'm a little high to the left. So I'm going to go into my menu. And I'm going to go back up to my reticule adjustment. Uh, you can have five different profiles look just by changing that letter at the top. Once you've selected your letter, push down and it changes you to your X axis. Immediately you do that, you get a little X on the screen and you can go ahead and turn the dial and move that X up to where you think it needs to be by changing the X and Y axis look. And as you turn it, it moves that little X up. And what it's done is it's frozen the image, which makes it really easy. And then when you think you're roughly there, you can go through and select your reticule style, of which there are six. Like that. Let me go back down there. Colour, you've got red, white, yellow, green. I'm going to leave it on red because of the weather conditions. Press down again and then long press to save it. And we're back out of the menu. And then we can come out of the menu. Fire our next shot. There we go. And because I'm using this tiny little screen, I didn't get that quite right. Let's try that again. There we go. Now let's be quite clear. I'm trying to zero this through this tiny, tiny, tiny screen using my camera. That's so I can show you what I'm doing. When you look through the scope itself, you'll be able to zero it a lot easier. The image is a lot clearer to see. Just doing it this way so that you can see what I'm doing. Because the thing is, when you do the settings and going through the menu and things like that, you cannot record directly to the SD card in the camera. It only records sort of live footage. It doesn't record all the menu and the setup. So it's the only way I can show you. But it does work. Next, we'll talk about the ballistic calculator. And this works by utilizing that laser range finder on the top there. So we're gonna go into that, and we're gonna go into the parameters. And these parameters, you need to set yourself. Different profiles that you can input and save. And you just press to cycle through what you want to change. You will need to know the velocity of your rifle and the bullet weight. However, if your pellet is 10.34, it only goes to one decimal place, so I'm running on 10.3. You'll need to know things like your bullet BC and your altitude and your temperature and your scope height and your uh, range that you're zeroed at, and I think I'm about 18. You can then change how you're marked on your reticule when you use your ballistic calculator. And you can change the color as well. However, the color you see on the screen doesn't always exactly resemble if you're using it to record. Then you go ahead and you can long save and exit out of that. And then go back to the main screen. Now if I use the laser rangefinder, it's going to tell me I'm at around 18 yards and it's going to give me a marking on the second press on the middle of my crosshairs, all there and thereabouts. Now if I change to a target further away, laser range that at 53 yards and then press again, it's going to give me a marker on my scope to tell me where I need to hold to. Using the top turret, you can adjust your zoom, and it only works for me turning clockwise. So 5.6, 11.2, 5.6, 11.2. If you go back to the left, it doesn't do anything. 
And the on-screen display doesn't always stay on. That's all your readings on the left and right hand side. You see it goes off. If you want to bring that back up, you can just go ahead and just turn that one click to the left and it just switches it back on for you. And that helps to save battery, obviously. And if you zoomed in, you can still use your ballistic calculator. Close. That ballistic calculator works really, really well. But I've got to be clear, it only works well when you give it the right information. You need to know the speed of your rifle, the scope height, the BC of the ammo. You've got to get all those things correct to get a good result from the calculator. It's maths. If you don't put the right numbers in, you're not going to get the right calculation. So, please be clear, the ballistic calculator part, you will need to spend some time on. But the results are superb when you get it right. To help you zero, the reticule will adjust left and right, 440 clicks either side, or up and down, 96 clicks above or below. And that's why I've added those no limit mounts just to give me a bit of extra range. But the Picatinny ones will still work fine, just being a little bit exuberant. The picture in picture function does come up with a little crosshair. That crosshair cannot be altered within that picture in picture function. It cannot. And take it as a guide. It is a digitally zoomed in image of the crosshair in the middle. It's a guide, a guide. It cannot be changed and it is simply there, and I say it again, as a guide. I've opened the cap because you, you can't see, but it is actually really quite dim out here. The camera is lying to you. It's about half past three in the afternoon. Two bull's eyes. the metal. A little bit of wind. Oh, wow. Just wow. Okay, <laughs> got that on camera. And then we're just going to come straight back there and we're going to zoom back, range it, take that away. Yeah. Yeah. Ah. 
Aha. Too easy. Too easy. I'm so cold and actually the camera is lying to you. It can kind of see me at the moment, but it is getting pretty dark out here. But I wanted to point out that if you remember at the start of the video, I told you I was swapping out the, the included mounts with some no limit mounts. Well, if you want to replicate my results of being able to shoot from 26 out to 100 plus in one go, you'll need to use those no limit mounts. That's why I put it on, because it gives me that extra little bit when it comes to wanting to hold for those distances. So that's it. If you want to replicate that, remember, I changed the mounts. Something else I'm going to point out is I've spent quite a bit of time outside with this in the cold, right? There are those buttons on the top there. If you're wearing a glove, you, you ain't going to be able to discern which button is which. And with my fingers, once they get really, really cold or it's in the pitch black, they're not overly tactile. It takes a bit of time of getting used to, so you do press the wrong buttons from time to time. So the buttons being there are great, but they could do with being a little bit more knobbly, just in my opinion, because a glove finger or really cold fingers, you're going to struggle with them. A lot of you will have just spotted something. Stop typing because I've only managed to spot it when I've come to edit the footage. That 100 yard footage looks a bit wrong and you're right. And like I say, until I looked, I didn't know. Let me try and explain. When you're looking through the pard scope, the actual live image, you're looking through the scope, taking the shot, and you have ranged your target at a distance. When you zoom in and zoom out, it moves your holdover point on your reticule up and down for you, depending on where you've zoomed, okay? However, if you use the pod to record what you're doing, so you're capturing what's going on, when you do that zoom function in and out, that holdover point doesn't adjust. So on the playback, it looks like it's in the wrong place. But on the live shot, when you're actually taking the shot, it's not, it's somewhere else where you're taking the shot to. So actually, it's not plotting it in the right way when you record it, if that makes any sense. And I'll put an image on the screen that shows you what I mean. So yes, there's a, a little glitch there. I found it, you can see it, but it doesn't appear in the live image when you take the shot. That works absolutely fine. It's just on the playback. What about the nighttime footage? While scanning the range field, you can see the pod easily allows me to see every part of the field. And I'm only using power level one on the illuminator. The ground is frozen hard with the grass because it's a heavy frost giving a reflection back. You do get an ambient pulse from the recording on the playback. No idea what that is. Now, over to the rabbits. The loud click noise you hear is me turning the rangefinder on and off. I did talk while filming at night, but the microphone really does not pick up your voice. It only records sounds direct from the scope. So it's no good to record your own voice. This is a local field of dreams. Look at all those eyes being picked up. The furthest are around 200 yards away. And where there is an abundance of food, there are foxes. And if they are your prey with a center fire, then this is going to work very well. Ranging them and identifying the target is easy. You just decide when to take the shot. The auto record for me is not very usable on a non-recall air rifle, only for the center fire. So this is where fingers, cold fingers on buttons need to be accurate to capture the recording. Something else to point out, my footage is expanded for the video. I am editing in 4K and the recording is not 4K. It's actually this size on my edit. I've enlarged it for the video. And you cannot edit video or any sort of resolution settings in any way within the menu of the pod. Battery life. Well, if you're just using it to look through the scope, and using that IR illuminator, you can expect around 
two and a half hours tops from a fully charged battery. However, if you're using the Wi-Fi and the rangefinder and you're doing a lot of recording, that is going to drastically reduce that battery life right down. So I would always suggest having a second battery ready to go in case you run out of charge. The pod does have Wi-Fi built in, so if you want to connect a third party app like RODECAM to it, so you can have your friends see what you're shooting at at the same time, it does kind of work. All the instructions are in the manual, including the passcode for the PARD Wi-Fi. I wouldn't expect a lot, I've got to be honest. It's a little bit flaky and it doesn't always do exactly what it's supposed to do. I think that's down to the apps rather than the PARD. It's there, it's a gimmick, but it's not a big selling point. So what are my final thoughts on the new PARD? Well, this is a great scope. It works well. It does exactly what it says it will. Being able to range and shoot from 26 yards out to 100 yards plus so easily, it's amazing. Regular glass day scopes cannot do it that easily. Well, I can't anyway. One thing I would say is though, it's electronic. And while British weather can be warm and dry, it can also be torrentially wet and I would not take this out in a downpour, just in case. PARD are one of the market leaders, and they have done a great conversion from the earlier NV008 models. And talking of the earlier NV008 models, how does this compare? If you're a tech geek, then yes, you're gonna want one. However, if you discount the new style reticule, the round one, the fact that you can use regular mounts, and the actual look of the thing, in my elderly eyes, it's giving the same sort of performance as earlier models. It's not 4K, granted, but I have bought this one with my money. And for the two weeks I've been using it, even with its odd niggles and strangisms, I am stoked with how it looks and how it performs. And I am a very happy customer. And I know that some of you eagle-eyed wildcat shooters out there will have noticed that this is attached to that. Well, a gentleman called Tony sent me this extender here to enable me to add my Sabre Tactical Bench System onto my wildcat. He has them available on a well-known auction site. Thank you, Mr. Tony. It works very well. If you found this useful, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe. And... Thank you for watching. Stay well out there, everyone. Cheerio.